So we are ready to start our next quilt project and it just in time for school. It is our school rules pattern, which is all pencils made out of all these fun, funky prints. This collection is from Michael Miller Fabrics. It's called Ink Unleashed and I believe it is in stores now. Um, so I just wanna give you a little quick, quick peek at the fabrics and then we're gonna get going on this one. Um, I love the fact that these all look like they're hand painted. So this is the plaid. We have some solids mixed in to kind of rest and break up from the prints. This one is brush swirls, marker lines, this is just brush strokes. Then we have like this random plaid. So um, you'll notice everything has a very sketchy feel to it, which just gives it a very organic look. Paint dabs, painted circles. This one's my favorite. This is just hooray. We're gonna use this in the rows in between the pencils. And then we have the white dabs that, um, I believe this is the back. Then we have the swirl paint dabs painted flowers a couple <clears throat> a couple of the garden pin dots are in there and then the big brush strokes um, so when you get a line like this or when I get a line like this and all these are fun wild crazy prints um, and I want to use them all in one quilt I look for a design that's going to showcase them to their best without overwhelming you and your your eyeballs of all of the crazy patterns so this pattern works perfect for that because all of the quilt, all of the prints are relegated to these pencils and then in between the pencils is a white background to kind of give your eye a resting place before you hit the next pencil. Um, and then we used the quietest of them, believe it or not, is this guy. He's the erasers and the black is the rim around that. So all of the prints are segregated by solids. They're all bordered by solids, which makes it a lot easier to work with. The only place you see the prints jumping out together is when we use the words hooray actually with these circles but because the circles are so dark in value and the words are so light in value they work okay next to each other so that's a little bit about my thought process with the fabrics again this is ink unleashed from michael miller and we're going to go ahead and get cut and we're going to i'm going to show you some strip piecing and i'm going to show you how to use the two peaks and one ruler and um i think that's it oh i'm working with directional fabrics i think that'll cover it so let's get started with the cutting and then i will show you how to start putting it together so we are ready to start cutting our school rules uh first thing is to put our fabrics in order and pull out the rulers we're going to be using um, I obviously am going to use our standard 8.5 by 24. And our two peaks in one Creative Grids ruler. So this ruler is the same ruler, is the same shape as the templates in the pattern. So, and we have it, so you can just use this instead of cutting out the paper template. So that side will do template two. And this side does template one and three. And I'm gonna show you how I cut my pieces using this ruler and then our regular rulers. So now we have all our fabrics in order. Um, I just start at the top and I'm going to cut everything. And then I use these little alpha bitties. We sell these on our website. Um, they're just letters, but then I took a hole punch and punched a hole in them so, and put a safety pin so I can clip it onto my piles. And that will make sure that I keep all my pieces labeled correctly, especially when there's so many of them. So I will pull those out and get cutting.
All right, so to cut these, this is the words hooray. So the words hooray go across the middle of the quilt in two rows, here and here. So we want to make sure that we get it as centered as we can on at least the middle row and that they're straight. So to do that, I'm going to cut with a single layer of fabric. I'm not going to cut through folded fabric. And I'm going to try to follow the line, the printed line first and then measure over. So these are five and a quarter by 39 and a half. So we're just worrying about the five and a quarter part right now. And I lost my ruler. There we go. All right, so five and a quarter on here. I'm gonna try this with a smaller ruler just so I can see what I'm doing. So there's five and a quarter. There's that. So that's about right. So three quarters, maybe, I'm gonna do it at seven eighths. I think seven eighths is more accurate. So seven eighths below one of the words is how I'm gonna cut the first one. And sometimes you have to tug the fabric to get it in the right spot. All right, so now that we have a straight edge to cut off of, we turn it around. And we use the five and a quarter mark. Okay. So we have that one ready. So we have to recut seven eighths underneath the word and then cut again from the other side to make them even. All right, so there's all the fussy cutting in the whole project, those two strips. So the next thing I want to show you is how to cut with this ruler. So first, we have to take our pattern and we have to find the template. There we go. And you take the ruler and you can lay the ruler on and it'll tell you we need to cut three and a half inch strips. These are going to measure at three inch when they're finished, when they're sewn in. So three and a half inch strips for that side and for this side. I need to cut from white. Uh, 30 going one way and 30 going the other. So see here, they're mirror image of each other. So that happens 99% of the time when you use this one, this type of a block. So what I do is I cut two layers or right sides together or wrong sides together, it doesn't matter. Um, and that way, if they're wrong sides together, every time I cut, I get a mirror, I get one and one. So in the end, I'll have to make 30 cuts through two layers of fabric to get 30 a 31 30 template ones and 30 template threes. So let's first cut our strip. Let me square this up. Cut a three and a half inch strip because that's where the ruler measured on the triangle. I'm cutting two at a time here. Now they're right sides together. So I've, I know there's no right or wrong to this white, but just pretend that it is. I'm going to line up my salvage so I don't waste all this fabric. So make sure it's all lined up. If you need to go repress it, press it so it's nice and flat. And then you take this ruler and we're cutting the side pieces, the template, template one and template three. So first we get rid of the salvage because we don't want that. And then you take the ruler and you align the top of the ruler with your strips, the side with the strips, and the bottom with the three and a half inch line. And you go ahead and you cut. When you slide up the two peaks of one ruler, there's a line that says baseline at the bottom. So you take that baseline and you put it on the bottom of your triangle. And it lets you remove this little dog ear on the end. Okay, so now I have take the top two, the, if this was right sides or wrong sides together, when I flip it out, 
the layer, like the picture. We have template one and template three. So that's why you cut 30 pairs and you'll get what you need for the pattern. And I'm cutting two pairs at a time. So there's two. Now for the next cut, you just flip the ruler over and cut on the other side. So I'm gonna cut them all and then I'll go back and do that base cut. But don't forget the base cut because it's really handy. Now we have our backgrounds for our pencil tips cut. We have our erasers cut. We have our band on our pencil. And then all of these are the pencils. The only thing we don't have cut is the pencil top. And that's because we have to strip, sew some strips together first. So you cut three of these tan strips. And you cut three of the black strips and you're going to sew these strips one strip to the other so just like we would do strip piecing for blocks so just sew one of these to one of these and then I will be back after I get them sewn I'm going to press them to the black and we'll be ready to use the same ruler or the template to cut the pencil tip to go up there so be back in a minute. All right, so we have our strips sewn together. There's three strip sets. And I pressed it towards the dark. And if you've not used this ruler before, I recommend you cut them in single layer. I'm gonna fold one in half and cut them two at a time. All right. So we lay our three and a half on here, aligning it with the end. All right, so there is our pencil tip. So we just need to cut 30 of those. And you can't flip the ruler this time. You have to cut them this way, because if I cut it this way, the tip will be brown, not black. And that's what this picture here is showing you. All right, so now we have all our pieces for our pencils. So I'm going to, um, we can get started. We're gonna sew all of these to all of these. I have cut my pencils, which I need to go through and count up how many of each color I need, and then those will get sewn to that. And then I'm going to show you how to sew these together. So I will be back in just a few minutes once I get these all sewn. So here's our pencil all finished. So first we need to sew the tips. So you take one of the pieces that looks template three, and you sew it to template two that we cut from the strips. And you're gonna sew a quarter inch seam along the side. So it's like this. And then we're going to press it towards the background. I feel these lay better if they go out towards the background, but you just wanna press here. Don't push way out because you can distort your fabric depending on how thick or thin it is. <clears throat> then you take your piece, your template one piece, and you line it up. And we're aligning that little notch we cut. In both cases, we're aligning it with the top of the triangle. So there it is on the first one, and then on the second one. And then we go ahead and we sew a quarter inch seam on that side, which is here. And then we press that seam open, and that makes our pencil top. So once we have our pencil top done, we can take the all of the eraser pieces and the black strips. So these are two and a half by three and a half. These are one and a half by three and a half. And then our various pencil bodies. You need to make 30 of these. So there's all of the bodies and that makes the body of the pencil. And I pressed everything towards the fat of the pencil. It really doesn't matter. You could press it that way or you press it up. This one is not a big deal about how you press it. So there's the body. And then we take the tip of the pencil and we're gonna sew that on here. And these do have little dog ears that stick out, very little. 
Um, you can leave those or you can cut them away. They're not as big as the ones we see in uh, half square triangles. So you just lay the pencil tip on the top of your pencil and you iron, sew that on. And then in this case, I want to iron towards the body of the pencil and away from these two sewn seams. It'll lay flatter and give you less bulk. So we're going to make 30 pencils. And then once you get all your pencils sewn, you're going to lay them out 10 per row. We're making three rows. And in between each pencil, you sew a one and a half by, hmm, I don't know how tall our pencils are. 12 and a half. One and a half by 12 and a half inch strip in between each of the 10 pencils. You do not sew it on the very ends of the row. So when I get all of that sewn and I have a row together, I will show you what that looks like. And then we'll be ready to start putting our quilt top together. So here are our pencil rows. They're all sewn together. I put the white sashing in between. So here they are. Just colorful, fun, fun pencils. You'll notice there is not a white strip on each end because once we put the center blocks together, we'll put a white border on and then the final two borders. I do that a lot in my patterns just so the center looks like it floats. Um, when you do this, I did press towards the sashing on all of them. And th this is, depending on the weight of your fabric, like my white is very, very thin and it does want to kind of roll into the seam. So you do have to be careful. Make sure you press from the front. You use the side of your iron and push into those seams to make sure there's no excess fabric stuck in your seams. So now that we have our three rows of pencils done, the next thing is to do the center strip with the word hooray and the top and bottom borders. So here's one. I've already sewn the top and bottom borders on it. And in the beginning when I was cutting, I had said, though I don't know if I left it in the video, um, I did say that I was just cutting them with the fabric, that I would sew these on and then cut them to length. And that's where we're at now. So I do that so that I don't have to try to match up the length of three strips. I have excess, I just put it on and then I square it up to the right length. Um, and that should be 39 and a half if I remember correctly. But just to be safe, we're gonna measure one of our rows because it has to match one of these. And look at that, 39 and a half, how good is my memory? So to cut these to length, I'm going to take a ruler with a horizontal line and align it with one of my seams and just square up one clean end. Then I'm gonna flip it around and I'm gonna use a straight pin and a ruler or tape measure and I'm going to measure on a seam and then when I get to 39 and a half I use my ruler again and I put a pin in there we go so then I use that pin in the horizontal line on my seam, on my sashing, to align my ruler. I remove the pin and I cut. And now I have my hooray, the same length as my pencils. I did want to show you a second way you could cut your strips in half. I just did it with the tape measure. Um, you can fold the strip in half and you can do a little math. I need to cut 39.5. I can divide it by two. That means I can then use my 24 inch long ruler because I need to cut this at 19 and three quarters. You put the 19 and three quarters mark on the folded edge. Do not put it on the other edge or you will have two strips and not one. Put that on, align it with a long seam and cut the end. Now of the two methods, the first method is much more accurate. The second method is quick and dirty. So you can choose which one you wanna do. Um, I go back and forth depending on how I feel, depending on how many strips I have. Uh, again, there is no right or wrong way to do stuff, but I do like to show you that there are more than one way to do something. Here are all the pencil rows and the word rows sewn together into the quilt top before I add on the borders. So we'll zoom in here just so you can take a quick peek at it. 
I did press the um, sashing between the words and the pencils, this little black round sashing. I did press that towards the black. Uh, next is the three borders, and I'm going to walk you over here and show you those. So let's show you the borders. First up is going to be this white border that's going to go around it. Um, that is going to finish off the pencils and the words. I'll, sh I'll go back over and show you that so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, so you can see there's white at the top. It'll give it a white border at the top and at the sides. It just gives it a much more finished feel. So we'll do the white borders first. Then we're going to do black polka dot border and then finally the big rings border. So just three straight borders, nothing real exciting. Just make sure if you sew your borders together, do it on a diagonal seam. And when you pin them, when you put them on, make sure you pin them to make sure you don't get rippled borders as well as always press out towards the border. So you press towards the white border first, the black border second, and finally the circle border last. So we'll be back to show you what it looks like when all the borders are on. All right, so we are ready to sew our borders on, but before we do that, we have to piece them together because any border over 42 inches um, is going to, you're gonna need to sew something on. So I use a formula that if the border is 42 inches or less, it takes one strip of fabric, which is 42 inches. If it takes 42 and a half to 60 inches, I do the math as one and a half strips will get me up to 60 inches. And if it is 60 to 84 inches, it takes two full strips. So that's just like a cheater math thing in my head. So I know how many strips I need to cut for a border. Uh, again, up to 42 is one strip, 42 and a half to 60 is one and a half strips, and 60 to 84 would be two strips. And then you would continue to go on if your quilt got bigger and bigger. So to sew our borders together, we always recommend them be sewn on a diagonal seam. And what we mean by that is not to sew them end to end and flip them out, because that would be a straight seam. A diagonal seam is you put the strips right sides together, but at a right angle. And then you sew from the upper left to lower right. And then you can flip it out and have a diagonal seam. Diagonal seam is less noticeable. Your eye is able to skip over it a little easier than a straight seam. That is the only reason we do a diagonal seam in most cases for borders. So if you don't feel comfortable doing a diagonal seam, you certainly can do a straight seam. But this is a more professional and cleaner look is to do the diagonal seam. So I recommend you at least try it and see how it works for you. Here is our school rules quilt featuring Michael Miller's Ink Unleashed all put together. And we are ready to send this off to be quilted. Let me zoom in here so you can see the adorable pencils. It goes together fairly quickly. It's a really good project to learn how to use the uh, two Creative Grids Two Peaks and One ruler. Uh, again, the pattern does have templates with it, but if you have that ruler, it is, makes it a little easier than having to cut paper templates. But this one is ready to go off to the quilter, and we'll share it with you when we get it back. Here is our school rules quilt back from the quilter. This is featuring Ink Unleashed from Michael Miller Fabrics. And I had Monica just do a really fun wave all over it. So it's a wave texture. Sorry, giving you a shadow there. Uh, there we go. Some waves. Kind of looks like somebody just, you know, doodled on top of the quilt. Uh, this is a... Uh, a really fun and easy quilt, perfect for back to school, for teachers, for artists, anybody who likes pencils. Um, it is available, the pattern is available on our website. Fabric should be out soon. And I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, make sure you like and subscribe. And thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, make sure you like and subscribe below. You can find the Whimsical Workshop on our website, thewhimsicalworkshop.com. And that has all links to all of our other social media platforms. Thanks for joining us.